Hello and welcome to Inside Home Brewing. I'm Jay Thomas and this, if I can open it, this is a uh, German steam ale. It's a uh, damp beer. Been in the bottle now for about a month. Real easy beer to make. I made it a little stronger than uh, specs, but uh, that's the way it goes. Real nice beer. Oh yeah, that's real good. Anyway, what I'm going to be brewing today is going to be a uh, a strong bitter, a British strong bitter beer. But what I'm going to do, there's a lot of controversy out there on uh, on whether or not doing a secondary fermentation is necessary. I think it is. I'm going to find out. I'm going to brew, um, well, this batch of beer. I'm going to brew it up. I'm going to uh, just do my normal brew thing. I'm going to put all the beer, after it runs through the wort chiller, it's going to go into a 10-gallon uh, 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 cooler. I'm going to add the yeast. I got my yeast starter here. Just made that a couple days ago. I'm going to add the yeast starter, stir it all up in there, oxygenate it, and then dump, put half of it into a 3-gallon carboy and the other half into another 3-gallon carboy so that it's all equal. Run blow-off tubes, run the whole thing like that. For 14 days, one of them is going to uh, get bottled after 14 days, not transferring it. After 11 days, I'm going to put it into uh, the uh, refrigerator, the ferment chamber refrigerator. It's going to be cold crashed and then bottled at day 14. The other one, I'm going to transfer it to secondary at day 14, let it sit another two weeks in secondary, and then go ahead and bottle it. Then both beers are going to go to a uh, a homebrew competition and uh, see what happens then and uh, and see which beer is scored better primary only or primary and secondary beer we'll see what happens and then I got plans for uh, another beer after that I'm gonna do a total of three different beers doing it uh, kind of similar but a little bit different on each one but uh, with primary only and primary and secondary and send them off to a competition so that way with three different beers I can hopefully can come to a conclusion you know on whether or not it's worth the extra effort to uh, go into a secondary or not we're gonna find out <clears throat> I'm gonna start off today with this one it's uh, like I said it's a British strong bitter beer got 11 pounds of uh, it's a uh, <clears throat> optic malt got one pound of UK United Kingdom uh, crystal malt 50 love of bond Another quarter pound of uh, UK chocolate malt and a quarter pound of Belgian biscuit. For the hop additions, I already got those all weighed out. For the uh, for the 60 minute boil, got let me see one and a half ounce of uh, Challenger hops at 6.8 alpha acid. That's going to be give us uh, 33, just almost 34 IBUs. And then for uh, at 30 minutes. I'm going to be adding, let's see, one half ounce. Yeah, one half ounce of North Down. Boil that for 30 minutes. That's going to bump us up another 8.5 IBUs. And then on the final, the final 15 or 10 minutes of boil, I've got uh, East Kent Golding Hops. That's an uh, ounce and a half. Well, just, just over an ounce of, uh, it's 1.25, just over an ounce of uh, East Kent Golding Hops. And also I have my uh, yeast nutrient and the world flak tablets. Those are going in on the last 10 minutes. I've adjusted the water. I added just a, a bit of uh, a little bit of baking soda and a couple teaspoons of uh, gypsum to adjust the water. And for the yeast, my yeast starter, it is the uh, Y Yeast London ESB Ale 1968. We're going to ferment this in the back room. It usually stays about 68 degrees in there, so that should be pretty good. I'm using the Eldorado spring, spring water, but like I said, it's been adjusted. I've got the water, it's heated up, it's almost heated up, I'll have to turn it, just leave it heat up just a few more minutes, and then we'll get uh, get this doughed in and going. I'll show you, I'll show you how the, uh, how I'm going to split this all up equally, try to get it equal, everything exactly the same, so then uh, we can see how this uh, primary only or primary plus secondary is really going to be. Give it a shot.
Here we go. So I want to go in at about 167 degrees. We're there now. Just let that run in. Got uh, 16 quarts of uh, strike water. That's going to put us just at uh, 1.25 quarts per uh, pound of grain. Get that going. So we're going to want to uh, dough in 167 degrees and mash it for, at uh, about 152 degrees. So got that all stirred in. Try to get it uh, stabilized to 152 degrees. See where we're at here. But 154. It's all right. Stir it around a little more. Make sure the uh, there's no clumps. I think we're pretty good there. Two degrees warm, that's fine with me. Slow. Get this covered up. Gonna give it a 90 minute rest and uh, I'll stir it a couple times in the, in the meantime. So the sparge water is all done. Running through pretty clear. We're at, uh, right at, right at uh, just over six gallons. Got a little bit more in here. May have to add a little bit more water just to get the volume up to where we want it. But uh, looking good so far. So it ended up uh, just over seven gallons. Get the heat turned on and uh, get the boil started here in a few minutes. Okay, so we just started boiling. I added the hops. I'll set the timer here for uh, 60 minutes. In uh, 30 minutes, I'll be adding more hops. No boil over. Wife is happy. Things are good. So the alarm just went off. I'll add the uh, next edition of hops. It's boiled down. We're uh, about just over six gallons, probably six and a quarter gallons right now. Depending on the uh, loss, I may have to add a, just a little bit of water to get it up to uh, six gallons to fill up each three gallon fermenter. But I do have the uh, yeast starter. A little bit of volume, not too much. We'll see what happens. So the alarm just went off. I'll add the uh, last edition of hops and the uh, World Flak tablet along with the uh, yeast nutrient. Dump that in there. Give it a little stir. And I got to get everything ready now. Get the uh, wort chiller ready. What's going to happen? It's going to come out of the. I'm going to move the brew kettle up here. Gravity's going to feed it down through the wort chiller and into this bucket, the uh, 10 gallon cooler then it's then I'm gonna uh, it'll be chilled off so then I will add the uh, the yeast starter stir it up real real good and then it's gonna go into a uh, half and half into three different or into uh, two different three gallon carboys right I got that all set up open up this valve Open up this valve. But what I'm going to do is uh, catch any cleaner, any sanitizer that might be in there. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty much cleaned out, but uh, rinsed out. There we go. Let that run in there, cooled off. I'll get a uh, get a gravity sample. So that quit running. It's all done. Got a little bit more coming out. We're right at, I don't know if you can see this, but it's right at six gallons. And then this quit running down here too. So we're right at six gallons. Now I'm going to take a uh, 
a temperature reading to make sure it's safe to uh, pitch the yeast. A little warm. 90 degrees. We're going to run it back through the uh, chiller one more time. So what I did is uh, cleaned out the, uh, the brew kettle, sanitized it, rinsed it out, and then uh, running it back through the uh, wort chiller. And it's going right straight back into this uh, bucket that it came from. So what I'm going to do is, uh, now I'll know it'll be cool enough to uh, pitch the yeast. It was a little bit warm, a little bit more than I usually make. So, uh, But anyway, we'll get the yeast pitched. I'll oxygenate it. Then it's going to be split into the, uh, two, into the uh, two glass carboys, three gallons each. So now I'll get this uh, yeast poured in here. into the uh, fermenters. Get the uh, oxygen going here. Crank it wide open. Let that run for a while. Stir it up some more then I'll get that running through. I'll take a uh, gravity sample see what the uh, OG is and then uh, fill up those two carboys so that's been running now for oh, well over a minute probably a couple minutes now should be good enough so I named this beer Margaret Thatcher she was a uh, strong bitter British woman anyway so uh, MT1 Margaret Thatcher 1 is gonna be uh, primary only MT2, Margaret Thatcher 2, is going to be uh, obviously put into a uh, primary then secondary. So I got that all in there. So I'm going to uh, fill it up. One gallon. I got a mark on each one. The uh, gallon lines. I'm going to put one gallon here, then one gallon here, one gallon here, 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 here. And it already has the yeast in there, so I'm trying to make everything as equal as possible. So I'm going to start filling one of them up while stirring the uh, while stirring the the uh, beer. Try to keep the uh, yeast in suspension inside there without it settling down. Trying to make everything as equal as possible. Here we go. Get a nice stir on that. A little more aeration to it. Just cleaned up my gloves with uh, alcohol. Here we go. MT1, Margaret Thatcher 1. Gonna give it one gallon. There we go. Once it gets to the one gallon line, I'll shut this off and uh, start filling the next one. Pretty close now. There we go. Shut her off. That there. Open her up. Give it a nice stir. Make sure that yeast is all thoroughly mixed for each each time, each batch. Hopefully, Margaret Thatcher don't get a yeast infection. Oh boy. I can't believe that just came out of my mouth. But anyway, here we go. Filling up Margaret Thatcher 2. Getting close. Almost to where it needs to be for one gallon on each one. There we go. Shut that valve off. Okay, back to Margaret Thatcher 1. Open up that valve. Let that run through. Give it a nice stir. The trobe and yeast clumps that were in that starter, 
and the, I want that broken up as much as possible to try to make everything as equal as possible. That should work. Okay, we're almost there. Just a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Margaret Thatcher 1 is at the 2-gallon line. Get that valve shut off. Get there. Open up the valve. And give it a stir. Here we go. And let that fill up to the two gallon line. Almost there. There we go. Margaret Thatcher, two, two gallons. Shut that off. So I got that propped up and leaning a little bit. And the volume inside was, uh, from what I could see, was just over two gallons. So uh, I think we're all good. Because we're going to lose a little bit in there. Just because it won't go through that valve. Anyway, here we go. Margaret Thatcher 1 going up to 3 gallons. Give it a stir. I think that yeast is going to be thoroughly distributed on all of these. Get a nice equal fermentation for both of these. Here we go. Margaret Thatcher 1 is full. Get that shut off. It's right at the line. It's under. That's okay. Now I need to uh, take a gravity reading. I forgot to uh, pull a sample to get an original gravity reading. I'll do that right now and top off Margaret Thatcher 2. Get a sample here. Top off Margaret Thatcher 2. Get a nice stir in there. Probably over a gallon. I don't know. See what happens. Anyway, we'll uh, take a gravity reading on that sample I have right now. So get a uh, gravity reading on that right now. Float high, baby. Right about where it should be. 1.056. 1 1.056. I don't know offhand without looking at the thing on what it should have been, but uh, 1.056 is pretty good. Take a taste. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. All right, get this turned back on. And top off Margaret Thatcher 2. Here we go, getting close to Margaret Thatcher 2 being topped off. And it's starting to suck air, so we're good to go. Let's tilt that a little bit more. There we go. Margaret Thatcher 2. Wow. I like it when a plan falls together. Those are both just uh, perfectly topped off right on the line. Margaret Thatcher 1. See that line? Just below the line. Margaret Thatcher 2. Just below the line. And that's just going to be sucking air. Anyway, I can lose that much. I don't care. I'm going to attach uh, blow off tubes and put those away. So it's kind of hard to see back here, but uh, Margaret Thatcher 2, Margaret Thatcher 1, blow-off tubes attached. And I'm just going to uh, cover those up and we'll check on them in a few hours, see if they uh, start to ferment yet. But uh, anyway, life is good. We got them going. We'll see how this uh, whole experiment turns out here in a few, in, well, 
couple months actually. Well, it's been about 14 hours. Let's see what we got here. They're both blowing off real nicely. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but they're pretty equal. Looking real good. I'll get this uh, switched out. Put some uh, put some fresh water in there. Clean up the mess a little bit. 14 hours, probably about 14 hours. Everything's looking good. So it's uh, been four days. See what this looks like. I'll uh, switch off the uh, the blow off tube and put a regular uh, ferment lock on there. I don't know if you can see this, but the levels are pretty identical with the blow amount of blow off. So yeah, I think everything's fine. And leave those alone till it's time to uh, take MT1, Margaret Thatcher 1, and cold crash it. So you can see line here and here very very close to identical blow off on either one of them so I'm real happy with the results and looking at the at the uh, ferment lock it's sealed it's got the water pushed to one side on each of these so uh, it's all good to go now just cover it back up and I'll leave it alone for a while So it's been 11 days on both these now, so uh, what I'm going to do is, take a, is uh, take a gravity sample off of both of them and see where we're at. The brewer's friend says it should end up around a 1.017. It should be done fermenting by now. You can see the, uh, the, the fill line is very even on both of these. Here's a MT1. See where that's filled to? MT2. They're pretty much dead even. MT1 here. The uh, settlement comes down to uh, right about this line here, just below, a little bit above. This one has a little less sediment in it. The uh, MT2 has a little bit less sediment. Why that would be, I don't, I don't have a clue. So anyway, what I'm going to do is just uh, pop the tops off of both of these take a uh, gravity reading and bring MT1 out into the uh, ferment chamber slash kegerator on the garage so that can cold crash at 38 degrees for a few days. I'm going to be uh, bottling it this weekend. And then in the meantime that MT2 is just going to be sitting there for uh, until that until uh, MT1 is bottled that'll give a full two weeks on both of them. Then MT2 after MT1 is bottled, MT2 is going to get transferred that same day into secondary, sit for 11 more days, secondary, then cold crashed and bottled. Total of, uh, of uh, 28 days. So one will have a total of 14 days, the MT1 is 14 days, MT2 will be uh, 28 days. So right now I'm just going to uh, pop the lids off of these and uh, take a gravity reading on each one and see where they're at. They should be, should be about the same. We'll see what see what's going on here. So now I'll take a uh, gravity reading on uh, MT1, which is the blue one. I like the color. Looks real good. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, well, Brewer's friend was off. So we're at uh, 1.012. <clears throat> MT2 1.012. Double check that. Point zero one two one point zero one two. Hmm. That's 
pretty good. Got some background bitterness to it. It's not real bitter. Very interesting. I like it. I never brewed a, uh, I never brewed one of these beers before. It's real smooth. It's balanced. Just a little bit of true bitterness. Not. I don't know how to describe it. It's it's really good. Okay, so I'll get this cleaned out and we'll uh, measure empty. So I got that mixed up. MT1, MT1, 1.012. I wrote down MT2. MT1, 1.012. Like I said, I'll get this rinsed out. We'll measure the green one. That's MT2. There we go. I'm guessing it should be exactly the same, but who knows? Go. Looking close. 1.012. MT1 and MT2, 1.012. I like that beer. That's good. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to put MT1. Now it's going to go into the, the, uh, garage into the ferment chamber and uh, MT2 will just go back into the uh, spare bedroom and sit about at about 68 degrees now for another couple weeks. So I got that put away and it's showing we're just at uh, 38 degrees in here. So just uh, let that sit now for a few days and then get it bottled this weekend. So it's been 14 days now it's time to get uh, Margaret Thatcher in the bottle. What I got going on here is uh, that's been cold crash now for a few days and I got my bottles all uh, ready to rock. They're all sanitized, ready to go. Bottling buckets here, ready to go. Got the uh, corn sugar weighed out and uh, some uh, spring water measured out. Just get that in the, in the pan. Heat that up. And I got my bottle caps. I always boil them, so we'll just, uh, I'll give them a quick boil. We'll just get that uh, turned on to high. Oops. Oh, yeah. Get that turned on and uh, get going. Once that's uh, boiling, I'll let it sit for a couple minutes and in, uh, into the bottling bucket, do the siphoning. And here we go. And I got uh, four bottles. I'm going to use these four end bottles here. That's going to be, uh, those will be set aside to go to uh, competition. To be judged. It's time to get busy on this bottling day. Oh, and uh, the uh, carboy, I need to reuse that uh, carboy, so I'm going to get that rinsed out and uh, put Margaret Thatcher 2 into uh, secondary fermentation either today or tomorrow. I'll try to get it done today. I don't know if I'll have enough time. Anyway, get busy on this uh, bottling. So now I'll uh, get this siphoned over. I'll also take a, a gravity reading on it. it uh, if I remember right, it was a 1.012. There we go, got that the siphon hose is right here near the bottom. It was a, a 1.012, I believe. I'll have to double check. Set that over here, take the uh, corn sugar. That dumped in there and uh, start siphoning inside. 
I remember correctly, was a 1.012 gravity reading. I'll, uh, it should be exactly the same. We'll just uh, test this out. Let's see what we got. 1.012. It's cold this time. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's good. I like it. So I'll get this all uh, transferred in here and start bottling. So try to siphon all I can out of there without uh, sucking up any yeast off the bottom, or at least not too much. Looking good so far. That cold crash really helps to get everything to drop down and just settle real good. Tilt that up, get as much as possible. That's it right there. I'll just uh, take my old uh, spoon, put some alcohol in there to sanitize, get that wiped off, give this a, uh, just a gen real gentle stir, don't want to uh, oxygenate or aerate it. Just real gentle. It's probably already stirred in there, pre-mixed, just from uh, siphoning in there, but just a little bit, just to make sure. Start the bottling now. So I'll take these four bottles. I'm going to fill those up and uh, set them aside. Those will be the ones going to the competition. Try to get them all even right where they should be filled up. About an inch and a half from the top. So those are all pretty close to the same fill level. I'll decide later on. Uh, it's you. They usually want three. I'll decide where they, uh, which three of these four I'm going to use. I want them all to be consistent. Here, I'll do these first, actually. Set that back there. I did have to use some uh, silver caps on the other ones. I didn't have enough cap. I didn't have enough all black caps. So get these on here. And the other silver caps. just so there's no confusion. Mark the tops with all, all these. Here's MT1 going to competition. All these bottles. It's probably going to be three of them. And here's the other silver caps. I'd put a magic marker on top. 
no confusion. And they'll be uh, labeled anyhow. Just continue uh, capping all those now. So I'll set these four beers aside. And label them so there's no confusion. I'll label these as uh, MT1, MT-1, MT-1 competition. It's got the uh, MT-1 competition. Goes on this six pack of the uh, Prost Doppelbach. There we go. The rest of those are just for enjoying. So uh, yesterday with uh, MT1 Margaret Thatcher one, I got the uh, got 29 bottles. Excuse me while I pour a beer. I got uh, 29 bottles of the uh, MT1 bottled after uh, 14 days primary. I had to go uh, one extra day so I could get the uh, the carboy all cleaned out and now it's all sanitized, ready to go. So I'm going to transfer MT2 into a secondary and let that sit for uh, 10 days. And then I'm going to cold crash it and bottle it after, a comp after a 28 days total time. So one extra day isn't going to make any, isn't going to change the results of the test. So anyway, I'll just uh, get that transferred and put away. And so I'll get this uh, siphoned over. So uh, when I took the test on both MT1 and MT2, it was at uh, 1.012, and then yesterday when I bottled MT1, it was still at 1.012 as the uh, gravity reading. This should be the same. I'll take a test just to uh, make sure. That's siphoning. We'll, uh, get a test on this. Like I said, it should be 1.012. It's alright. really love the color. Zero one two. It's all consistent. Should be exactly the same. Tastes exactly the same. Just going to be a difference. Is going to be what good does it do in a uh, secondary? We'll see. Oh, that's good. So that's siphoning away. The uh, hose comes right to here. I'm trying to keep it off of there a little bit just to uh, avoid sucking any yeast. Little bits going up. That will settle down into the uh, secondary fermenter, of course. Instead of going into the bottling bucket, it's going into secondary fermenter. It's going to be settled and uh, shouldn't be a problem. It won't. It won't be in the. It won't be in the final product. Sucking up a couple little chunks of yeast. There we go. That looks pretty good. Very little left over. Clean 
have this lip here. Should be good. So I don't know if anything dripped on there, but uh, we'll get that cleaned up. Let that dry off for a second. Top on here. See that 12 MT2, 1.012, 1218. All right, I'm just going to put that away now. We got a positive pressure pushing air, CO2, whatever air was in there is pushed out by the CO2 as it off gases. So we'll get rid of any oxygen air that's in there is, is going bye bye right away. And we'll just put that away now and uh, come back in 11, 10 days. So it's been uh, two weeks now. Margaret Thatcher 1 has been uh, bottled. It's been in, uh, in the bottle now, conditioned two weeks. Test this out. That's some carbonation. Oh, yeah. It's good to go. So what I got going on is... Uh, Margaret Thatcher 1 is carbonated, ready to go, two weeks, bottle condition. Margaret Thatcher 2, I got all this, uh, the bottles are ready to go. Got the corn sugar weighed out, got the water measured out. I'm going to uh, heat that up, heat up the priming sugar, and uh, get bottling here in just a minute. That's pretty good. Has a haze to it. Smells good, tastes good. Not quite as bitter as I thought it might be. I've never made a uh, a uh, strong bitter beer before. Good though, I like it. We'll see what uh, what happens. Like I said before, these are both going to uh, be judged. This one's a done deal. So, what it is is what it is. And uh, Margaret Thatcher too is uh, ready to get bottled right now. So we're ready to go. Get the uh, priming sugar dumped in here without uh, splashing it. Just gently put that in there. My siphon going. Very little sediment on here, just right at the very bottom. Got that going. I'll take another gravity reading just because. It should be, it's, nothing should have changed. It's 1.012. that in there, quietly siphon that onto the uh, priming sugar. I'll take a, uh, my gravity reading and take a taste of this. Might be a little cool for an accurate reading. We'll see what it says. Should be pretty close though. 1.012 We're all good Now Now I get a little comparison Margaret Thatcher 1 Carbonated Margaret Thatcher 2, an extra two weeks in uh, secondary, not cold, but uh, not carbonated. Hmm. 
Maybe just a. Maybe because it's not carbonated. Hard to say. Maybe a little more bitterness in uh, Margaret Thatcher too, for some reason. Interesting what carbonation does. Anyway, we'll see what happens. We'll give it a couple weeks. Get this bottled up. Give it a couple weeks to uh, carbonate and uh, pull it out, test it, and then uh, send it off to a competition. All right, so uh, that's a done deal. There's very little sediment was left in there. Anyway, gently uh, stir this up a little bit without uh, aerating slash oxygenating it. And get bottling. So I have these uh, four bottles. I'm going to uh, set them aside. They're going to be. Uh, I'm going to pick which ones of which one of these four, which ones of these four. It's usually three bottles for a competition. Which one of these four will be going to uh, competition? Try to get the perfect fill on these. Equal. Usually about an inch and a half to two inches. I'll just set these over here to the side so I know which ones they are. So I'm all done bottling. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, I got them all put away. I put it, all these uh, Margaret Thatcher 2s next to uh, Margaret Thatcher 1. I'm just going to leave them all sit here now, get it covered up, and uh, let it sit and uh, get them off to a competition here in a couple weeks or so. So I sent this homebrew off to the uh, competition. It was the uh, Peak to Peak Pro-Am homebrew competition. And this is a sample of uh, the Margaret Thatcher one, the one that was only primary for 14 days and then, uh, and then bottled. So I have the uh, results here between the two of them. The uh, Margaret Thatcher one, this one, that was uh, 14 days, then bottled. Okay, we got a score of, uh, not so good, but uh, 28 points. 28 points puts us, let me see, 21 to 29 points. Misses the mark on style and or moderate flaws. Okay, I got uh, Sean Miller, judged this one. Okay, let's see what it says. Aroma, sweet, estery, fruity aroma, 7 out of 12. Appearance. Long-lasting tan head, tiny bubbles, two out of three. Flavor, fruity, hoppy flavor, finishes dry, 10 out of 20. Mouthfeel, no, there's no comments on there, but uh, it gives me a three out of five. Uh, overall, it uh, looks like it's uh, right in the middle of the road of everything, but I did get uh, seven out of 10 points on that. Feedback. Good beer overall, slightly overcarbonated. Yeah, it is a little overcarbonated. Slightly overcarbonated. Um, slightly overcarbonated bottle, something after it opens. If bottle conditioned, watch sugar additions and fermentation time. Watch sugar additions and fermentation time. Let it sit a bit longer in primary. There you go, it was only 14 days and then bottled. A lot of people will just go, uh, you know, 14 days seems like a long time to some people. But anyway, it wasn't, apparently it wasn't in uh, primary long enough. Which brings up the question, still, is uh, primary only, a longer primary only, beneficial? We'll see. Okay, then uh, here we got... Uh, Gary Glass, judge this one also at uh, 28. Uh, light for aroma, light toast, graham cracker, something mouthfeel, something mellow. I don't know, I can't read his writing. 
Um, appearance. Something tight, big head. Flavor. Sweet, a bit thin. Spicy, estery. Something low for style. Oh, bitterness is low for style. Uh, fruity. Some oxidation. I uh, got 10 out of 20 on that. The other one, appearance, was 1 out of 3. This one, mouthfeel, is 3 out of 5 with no comments on there. Overall, it's kind of middle of the road, 6 out of 10. Nice hop aroma and flavor, but needs more bitterness. Fairly oxidized. So the one that was only in primary was slightly oxidized. Okay. So moving on to... Uh, the beer that was uh, primary 14 days and switched to secondary for another 14 days. I have the sheet right here. It's, this one scored uh, 32 points. 32 is going to be, let me see, 30 to 30 to 37 generally within style parameter, minor flaws. Okay, Sean Miller, same judge that scored that other one. Uh, let's see. Aroma, fruitiness, good. Appearance, long-lasting, creamy, tan head, fine bubbles. Three out of three. The other one was eight out of 12. Um, flavor, clean fermentation, 11 out of 20. Finishes dry and bitter. Okay, mouthfeel, got four out of five on that with no real comments. Um, overall, Kind of middle of the road, a little bit better than middle of the road. Seven out of ten. This is a great beer and very nice to drink. The beer finish is bitter and dry. Bitter and dry, but a good example of the style. Total 33 points. And then uh, here we go with uh, Gary Glass, same guy. Um, 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 aroma, caramel light. Toast and graham cracker. Spicy and pepper on the hops. Fermentation, fruity, and pineapple. 8 out of 12. Appearance. Uh, let me see. Big head, tight lacing. 1 out of 3. Uh, flavor, sweet, caramel, something graham cracker. Hops, some spicy hops. Uh, bitterness, a bit low. Fermentation, fruity, not as prominent as aroma. Maybe. I, I, I can't read his writing very well. And then, uh, finish aftertaste. He says dry and estery. Other, something oxidized. So this beer was also slightly oxidized. Or the, uh, the one that went into a secondary was apparently equally as oxidized as the, uh, as the primary only, you would think the secondary one might get a little more oxidation, but they're pretty equal. So, uh, moving right along. It's pretty good. Ah, uh, mouthfeel. No comments, but it's got some marks in here. And it's about the middle of the road. Three out of five. Uh, overall is uh, pretty much middle of the road, seven out of 10, quite drinkable. Esters are dominant, some oxidation, 31 points. So there you go. So it brings up the question, is it beneficial to uh, do secondary? Possibly, because it did score better and it's equally, but it is equally as oxidized as the, uh, as the one that was primary only. And he brings up a good point to uh, leave it in uh, let it sit in primary longer. Could be. So, kind of inconclusive, but we got a better score on the one that did go from uh, primary to uh, secondary. And I got another experiment going on right now, so stay tuned. We'll see what happens on this whole debate of uh, primary being unnecessary. We'll see you next time inside Home Brewing.